warm welcome to everybody joining us uh, for this very interesting conversation that we are hosting on behalf of college my name is ankur vora i am the co-founder of the outreach collective lot of you know me but those of you who may not know me i have had uh, experience of working in the higher education Uh, sector for almost 15 years now uh, in my previous assignments i worked with organizations like ashoka op general global university and clfo uh, over the last one year i have been consulting i am right now consulting with uh, a couple of companies and one of those is college uh, and college i know sayed and suchita for quite some time who are the co-founders of this beautiful organization Uh, and i use the word beautifully very consciously because they are two beautiful people who really want to do make an impact in the things that they are doing uh, and they want to make a positive impact in the life of the students which is the most important thing uh, for me personally also because i have been always moved by uh, organizations or people that have tried to leave a positive impact in anything that they are doing uh, centered on students and i'm very very honored to have a very distinguished panel here today with me all i mean i'll say all four of them are my dear friends i'm so lucky to call them friends now uh, i have sonia soni who is the head of career counseling at anitya billa world academy in mumbai i have uh, ms nitina dua who is the head of career counseling at shivnatha school noida i have upasna kendra who is uh, uh, the head of career counseling at dps international school saket in new delhi and i have ms monica sharma who is uh, the career counselor at the shri ram school in aravdi aravdi campus in delhi ncr and we definitely have with us sayed uh, who is the co-founder of college and today we are going to discuss a very important uh, and pertinent issue uh, for me and for the panel i'm sure uh is we talk about the deep industry academia divide a lot in india and uh, when sayed came to me and he said you know college wants to create an impact in this area where we want to make our students not only uh career ready or job ready but we also want them to be validating their career choices by doing hands on projects by doing uh what they call impact projects or we can we can even call them experiential learning projects right there in their high schools and i know there has been some interest some few good companies that have been trying to enter in this field and do some good work here uh, what makes college stand out is the diversity of the number of programs that they are offering right across the uh, uh, across the bandwagon and i will talk about it during the webinar today uh but before we get into what college is doing and how they are trying to solve this problem i thought it will be a great idea to introduce what is impact projects what is experiential learning what is it that the students of today uh, are looking for and how the career the, some of the leading career counselors in this country are tackling this very issue of industry academy divide students entering universities or courses that they are not prepared for or they they never thought like if i want to do business management what is actually will happen in my business management course or if i want to go for ai how do i understand what exactly will happen during those three or four years of my me studying ai so i have with us uh, the distinguished panel uh, i'll start with having few uh, initial remarks from the panelist uh, we'll have give them 5 minutes each to talk about how they are uh you know tackling this problem in their own schools with their own students i know for a fact my first uh, speaker who is going to talk about this very subject uh, nitina nitina has been doing some fantastic work and some of the one of the first person that came to my mind when i had said we should do something like this i want to talk about this i was her and her work in getting her students internships through her parent school parent network uh so nitina you know we, i would like to invite you here and you know your opening remarks on this uh, very subject over to you thank you agur and uh, good evening everyone thank you for taking our time to be here with us today and uh, a very very pertinent topic and i think impact if i say uh, has has kind of got its deeper meaning post covid in in different connotations um you know impact has hit all of us and each of us uh, you know understands impact in a different way we have to as college counselors i feel i you know define impact 
uh, in the right way to our student community. Uh, because we are dealing with high school students and their understanding of impact can vary uh, because, you know, vary in terms of engaging into something and uh, because they're, uh, you know, engaged, you know, parents are deeply involved, their own peers are deeply involved. So for them, understanding the impact bit is, is huge. Um, I think uh, being a 21st century learner where skills are so evident today, uh, projects specifically which have impact project is just is is actually a change maker in terms of their own journey to say is this a particular area of subject that I resonate with and there are different kinds of impact projects one can really align themselves with um, depends on what is a student's strength so I'll just like to when I was thinking about how to you know go about it and I was thinking about what kind of impact project students can do and we do multiple things on campus and I think we'll dive deeper later into that but I was just trying to categorize uh, you know uh, some kind of impact projects one is of course uh, impact through research so there could be a research impact project uh, there could one could be an impact project through academia right so it could be academically aligned where you're really looking at, uh, you know, your area of subject, uh, what deeply interests you, and then how do you look at impacting your community? And that community could be your own school. Uh, impact could also be created through organizing or hosting live events. You know, that could be, uh, you know, arts festivals, capstone uh, live events, different things that could happen within the campus. Um, build a social media presence and see how many people are there who gets get impacted by what you do. And you know you have to truly define an impact on social media to the student community differently. It needn't be, you know, our children get uh, at looking at how many Instagram likes they have. That's not the kind of impact we are looking at. You have to channelize that impact. You have to tell them while you're on social media, how can you really navigate your way and use it effectively? Uh, you, you know, students could also be uh, asked or requested, depending on what their strengths are, showcase, uh, you know, writing or publishing something creatively or what they do. And that's also a form of expression. And impact could hugely come through that as well. Uh, I don't know, I'm sure Sonia Upasana and Sayyad and Monica Ma'am will agree to this, but, uh, you know, we are, we are dealing with a generation which needs instant gratification and, you know, quick money. So, you know, uh, impact could also be done by, you know, if some of them want to be really, really intelligent, say, I want to start my own business and see what kind of impact I have. Do I make money for myself? Do I make money for the community? So start your own business. And while I was thinking about it, and these are my, my opening remarks to say that these are these different kind of projects in which we do align ourselves with our student community on campus. And we do, and I'm sure uh, my colleagues here will also, you know, resonate and add more to what I've initiated. Over to you, Ankur. Thank you so much, Nitina. Yeah, absolutely. I think you have set a, a broad context of the conversation. Yeah, impact means multiple things and multiple ways in which a career counselor can help a student create impact uh, for in his or her life. Uh, I'd like to quickly invite also Upasna. Upasna, your initial remarks for, on this subject. Um, first of all, a very good evening to all of you. And uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Ankur and Syed, for this uh, session. I mean, uh, it's going to be a great learning for me also to listen from uh, stalwarts uh, that are present here. And um, taking forward what, uh, you know, Nitana said that... Uh, Yes, impact can be um, created uh, through various uh, categories that the way she has categorized. Um, when I think about projects which can create an impact, what I feel is the very first question that uh, a student needs to answer is the why of the project. I mean, why is he even thinking about that project? Is it because he wants to build his profile? Is it because it looks good on his CV? Is it because um, everybody else is doing? So I should also be doing, I should not be left behind in the race. So I believe for anything and everything, even uh, an impact project is something where the why uh, or the answer to that why is really important. So the answer can be anything. Uh, it can be, uh, is it for my own personal growth or is it um, something I'm doing so that, uh, you know, uh, not just personal growth, 
uh, do I really want to work on my skills the way Natana said that, yes, we are talking about 21st century skills and uh, is it something that I really need to work on? Or is it because I need to get a feel of uh, what that sector might look if I'm going to do an impact project related to that? So I get a feel of it. So for example, you know, children uh, do certain uh, businesses like Nitana said, that, you know, they, they, they try and uh, probably develop a product or something, an app or something. And then when they have to market it, do they really like doing the marketing part of it? Do they like the production part of it? or something else related to that. So I guess um, when you're talking about it, um, it's really important for us as career counselors in schools to make this an important aspect of any impact project. And uh, it should not be a mad race towards, uh, you know, anything and everything that comes to them. They should be, uh, you know, running after it and kind of you know, doing everything that comes uh, their way. So it is important for them to answer those questions and important also for them to reflect on why and not just why, again, you know, uh, I have been uh, looking at a lot of uh, CVs of my students and uh, have been uh, discussing a lot with them about the impact projects. What I see is um, they kind of, sometimes fall in the trap of uh, doing what the seniors have done and only looking at that. I, I say that, yes, it's important that they get inspired by them, but there is something more that they can do to it and something which is sustainable, something which lives on even after they've left the school. So, you know, creating a legacy for their juniors later. So I guess that's really important. And if they're able to do this, I guess that's that's what I would say that that's creating an impact or having an impact on the larger community. So I think that's my two bits. Then uh, I would like I to I, I, from yeah. I think I really like the idea that you said. I mean, these this should not be taken as another way of profile building, which a lot of the students I also see are uh, doing it just because they think it will look good on their CV and adds to their profile and maybe get them some brownie points, and then it becomes just another activity that they have to tick box. Uh, I think I get your point. Uh, impact means a much larger idea than just checkbox, you know, ticking a checkbox in your TV or resume. Uh, interesting. Uh, uh, and I thank you for that. Uh, may I invite uh, Miss Monica for her uh, comments? Monica, ma'am, if you're here. Yes. Uh, good evening. I hope you can hear me. I'm extremely sorry about my uh, camera not working. But uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to this panel. And uh, yes, I'm here to share my thoughts with my experience with the children. And uh, whatever my uh, other colleagues have said on the panelists have said right now is absolutely true. And uh, to just add to that, when I work with children, it's generally uh, basically what uh, I look at uh, asking them if there is a problem that they would like to solve and something that they feel passionately about. Because I seriously feel that it is that passion which will then bring about the impact. And if there is something that they feel very passionately about, they then sit down and decide how they're going to do it. And I encourage them to look at collaboration. So children generally work very well with collaboration. They work very well with, um, uh, because there, there should be a lot of inclusion also in it. Because it, the, uh, the extent to which they involve more people and they use their kind of expertise, it really helps them to kind of take that project forward. And uh, since they are children, they may have certain handicaps, but no matter what they do and to what extent they do it, there is always that learning uh, set of skills that they pick up and definitely some impact that they eventually do bring out. And uh, uh, we uh, basically generally encourage all the children to take part in certain projects because irrespective of whether they are looking at applying outside the country or they apply within the country, irrespective of any such thing, the whole idea is to get them into uh, a global environment 
where they will eventually be solving problems. So that's the way we take it forward. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, there are so many other ways in which we do it. So there are different uh, events that we have, uh, and we'll be discussing that, I'm sure, uh, further down in the panel. Thank you so much, uh, Monica, ma'am. Yeah, we will come to that. I mean, uh, thank you so much for putting this context also in that, you know, you encourage your students to first understand what problem they would like to solve and then help them uh, make an impact in that area. I mean, that makes sense. That makes uh, for motivated children who want to do a particular project and not, uh, uh, you know, take another checkbox. So thank you so much for that. Uh, may I move to uh, Sonia? Sonia, over to you for your initial comments. Thanks, Ankur and Sayyad. And I think um, I would resonate every word of uh, what Nitina has said and, you know, over to Pasna and Monica. And I would say that impact projects these days are being looked as looked at by students more of as a profile building uh, scam kind of a thing, which should not be the case. Uh, in my opinion, impact projects are very, very powerful because they have a bi-directional impact, which could be to help students also understand as well as gauge their capabilities about the passion they're looking at. And as Monica said, I would reiterate that passion should be the driving force, which also allows you to kind of check the academia you're looking at. It, in student impact projects are very, very important because they're also helping them to develop the real life skills. Because in reality, when you are at college or the undergraduate level, you're actually going to be working with folks and people from different equations coming in. One of the key takeaways that I've always believed an impact project should have is a, is a central idea of a DEIG. Uh, I'm a big fan of DEIG in a personal space, which is diversity, equity, uh, and social justice, so uh, and equality. When we're looking at the so student impact projects as counselors, my idea is to have a practical experience for a student. It could be something driven out of a family experience, or as uh, Nitina said, you know, building up internships through the family help that you have. That's a good idea. But a conversation with the student, okay, so what do you want to achieve by doing this? You know, that's the most important thing. The what is more important for me than the how over here, because these days a lot of roads have already been cut because my senior did it, so I want to do it. So the road has already been put there that, okay, this is how you're gonna do it. But what is different that you're getting on the plate for the universities to recognize, you want to do a student project to build up your profile. Fine, we understand that, we respect that. But what is so different about it that you wanna talk about it to the university? That's the key idea that I tell them. And of course, what Monica said, that it has to be like a legacy left behind. Unfortunately, it is something that you start and it ends with you. So collaboration has to be there if you're looking, it, looking at it as a student impact project. Otherwise, you call it your project and just it ends with you once you leave the school. In my opinion, um, just to end it up before I hand it over to you, Ankur, I would call it a sustainability ambassador to someone who is actually doing a real student impact project because you are kind of looking at the tapping the sustainability which would have the larger sounds for the generations to come. And uh, one thing to end would be that uh, no one is too small in this world to make a difference. That should be the key Absolutely. takeaway. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely, Sonia. I love what you said, and especially the concept of DIG. I think uh, collaboration, legacy, I mean, do, having the right motivation for doing it. I mean, the entire, the four distinguished career counselors have, have spoken about the same themes. And I think... Sayyad, when I move to you for your uh, uh, the work that college is doing in this area and how you have conceived the impact projects. And uh, if you go to our website, there are some very interesting projects that you are running. Uh, I mean, I love your hashtag, be a doer. I mean, you're always, the company is all about helping students do things, make an impact in a positive way. You know, UN Sustainable Development Goals are a big driver theme of all the impact projects that you're doing. And uh, having been and having yourself being based out of US and Suchitra, uh, Suchita being in India, 
I mean, you're actually uh, bringing the West and the East together in their in your own ways and the work that you are doing. So over to you, Sayyad. I mean, we all all uh, would want to hear more about Ecology and the work that you are doing in this area of impact projects. Thank you, Ankur. I mean, one thing that I'm so happy to hear today, and it's it's a very recent phenomenon. I, I'm sure you would also notice that hearing the high school counselors, uh, almost everything that everybody has to, said today is almost identical uh, to what I hear from the executives of Amazon and Microsoft and Intel. <clears throat> you know, the for example, Monica was talking about problem solving. Uh, find a problem and try to solve it. And that leads to so many ideas and self-discovery and identification of strengths and weaknesses and what you want to build on. Um, Nitina, you were talking about live events and community and research projects. These are all part of the impact projects. Uh, Sonia has not mentioned, but her daughter uh, is doing a project with animals. Uh, and I was so I worked with her and I know how she thinks and how she wants to work. But the fact that she has focused on such a niche area you know, one can study that. Where is this coming from? Why is she so inspired? What drove her to that particular area? And how much stuff she has that she can pursue and make a whole beautiful, meaningful career out of it. Uh, so all I can say is that, you know, the impact projects that we do are very focused on some of the things that you have all said. Uh, one of the most important thing about impact project is what we internally call dominant realities of professions. And every profession has certain dominant realities. Uh, journalism, for example, uh, if you if if the idea of building trusted network doesn't appeal to you, you're not going to be a successful journalist. Uh, it's not about writing. It's not about recording videos and you know talking about stories that anybody can do. Stories are everywhere. Journalism is dominantly about building trust with people who you do not know. What do you do? You have that skills. Similarly, uh, you know the 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 profession of editing or visual editing or uh, a graphic designing and graphic effect, which is such an important career. If you are not comfortable working alone, if you are not comfortable sitting with the computer and just going by similar text over and over, you're not going to succeed. That field does not involve a lot of teamwork. You, you, it'll, it'll be great if you're a good teamwork, a team player, but if you want to be surrounded by team all the time, you want to socialize, that career is not for you, you will not be happy. So one of the most important thing that we do, Ankur, is uh, that we want to introduce young people to dominant realities of careers. And we do this in two simple ways. One, we bring mentors. Mentors are professional people who are out there doing stuff. And they can tell students, say, hey, this is what I like about my career. This is what I don't like. This really sucks. This is one of the overheads of my career. I have to stay late uh, or I have to travel a lot. But this is one of those things that I don't like. Majority of the thing I really like. And here is what I do to, to develop my professional competencies. These are the conferences I go to. These are the books I read. This is a blogger I follow. This is a Reddit uh, thread that I am very passionate about. And what it does is that it gives students some level of clarity of where they might want to go. So this is one aspect of it. And then they actually do the project. So if they're doing a project with a journalist, they will actually go out and, and file a story, interview people, make sure that the story has uh, triangulation of sources, that they're not just quoting one source, they're quoting several sources. And understand what why, why is it important for them to quote several sources for a particular story? Why is it, what is this idea of objectivity? What is this idea of bias? How do you get rid of bias? These are some of the core things that they learn. Um, and college impact projects are not meant for students to go too deep. I think at that stage, and two books comes to mind. Uh, one is uh, David Epstein's book uh, called Range, uh, in which he argues that early specialization is a very bad idea in the century. Uh, and also Adam Grant's book, Original, in which he actually uh, chronicles the work of some of the greatest people who have, uh, who have lived on earth. And in both books, uh, you will see that authors are basically saying that it's important for young people to touch things uh, and before they specialize. And I think that is the problem we want to solve. I think what we are seeing is that a lot of young people, their parents and their ecosystem and the people around them are putting them in a pigeonhole very early on. Very, very early on, we are asking them to do specific things, which data is showing us and science is showing us that it's not working, it's not healthy for them, it's not good for them. Um, so, so impact projects are really 
focused on two things. One, dominant realities of profession and two, actually doing things. And uh, one of you was talking about the why, the, the importance of why. It's very important. But I think, you know, for a young person, the why is not so important. Because to answer the why, you need the benefit of time and experience. Otherwise, it's very hard for you for a 16, 17, 18 year old to answer a question, why should I do this? You have to go and do it first. The why will come from it. Uh, so the, the this question of why for adults and the question of why for young people are very different. They have very different dynamics. Uh, very often I see that we expect very young people to answer the why in the same way as we adults do, who have the advantage of time and experience and we have traveled and whatnot. We have lots of privileges on which we can base our why. Young people don't have, they're clean slate. So really what they need is to dirty their hands. So that's why the projects are intentionally designed to be four weeks. We tested it with 12 weeks. We tested project with seven weeks, nine weeks, really variety of uh, duration. We found out that four weeks is just ideal for somebody to do a project and get the dominant realities of that profession. And if they're not able to get that, they can do another project. It's not a good idea to suck them into something very specific, very early. And when I say early, I know in... In, in 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 certain countries, early could mean like um, you know grade yeah. six. You know, I, I don't mean that. I think early by scientific uh, evidence, early is teenagers are early. 20, 21, 22 years old are still considered early because they have not figured it out. So impact project are really focused on this. And now we are working with some of the companies to bring them as uh, enterprise mentors, which means. Students can do project with company representatives. What does it mean? It means that, of course, if you're doing a project, let's say with, uh, I'm just taking an example. Let's say if you do a project with Amazon, the project will be about what Amazon does. It won't be about what Oxfam does, or it won't be about what CNN does. And it's okay for you to learn what Amazon does. You may not want to work with Amazon by learning what they do, and, and you might want to do something. But what it does is that it also introduces them to the culture of the company. And they will get a direct contact from the company. Um, and this is something that has come from some of the organizations that I have worked in the past, and I'm I'm associated with them. And they have said, why don't you invite us also to become your enterprise mentors? And we can create projects based on our vision and mission. We will also make sure that they learn about our culture, what we do, how we do. And in the process, uh, you know, they can not only judge whether our company is a good fit for them for future, they can also decide whether our industry is a good fit or not. Because in some ways, companies represent the industry they are in. Um, so I'll, all I want to say is that most of the thing that uh, panelists have said today is just so um, so refreshing. It was, you wouldn't hear high school counselors say this 10, 12 years ago. It's a, it's a very new uh, and refreshing thoughts. And I'm glad that the gap that you were mentioning, Ankur, uh, that's also the gap of the thought processes. It's not just the gap. And you know the numbers show us that the industry, the speed with which the industry is developing their practices and the speed with which educational institutions are developing their career, there's a 10 year gap. Practically what it means is a student who is studying something in, in the college, has already been outdated 10 years ago. This is what the research shows. Uh, so this is a gap in the curriculum and practice, but also the gap in the thought process. Um, not very long ago, if you speak to a executive of an industry and say, what do you want in your employees and you know in your partners? They will say certain things. They'll say, let's say five or six things. If you go back to the counselors and placement cell officers and trainers in academia and uh, school ecosystem and ask them the same question, they will say five different things. Today, that is not the case. I think the thought processes are very aligned. And we just want to play a role in that. I think Collegy has a big opportunity here to play that role, to be a nudge, um, you know, to nudge that uh, uh, you know, that ecosystem where students can quickly find out what, uh, what, what are their strengths by testing out different things. Um, and one of you were also uh, mentioning, I think, uh, Monica, you were mentioning the problem solving part. One of the things we ask in, when students create their profile on college is, uh, list two problems that bothers you. And so much problems, you know, and so much uh, uh, ideas come if you identify a problem. I mean, it opens up a whole new door just because you have identified a problem. 
take Uber's example. Uber is now a multinational company. It's everywhere. We all have used it. But Uber had identified a problem in San Francisco, just one city on the west coast of one country. Uber did not know that Uber, uh, that Uber would be required in Delhi and Gurgaon and Noida and Malaysia and Jakarta. They had no idea. All they were able to do was identify a problem in their own city. And it led to a very successful company. They did not know the problem exists in other cities as well. They had no intention to go beyond San Francisco. If you look at their initial deck, they were trying to launch a, you know, a black cab to the residents of San Francisco. So identifying problem and thinking about problem and articulating problem is, I think, is a big step. We often bypass this. And I would like, you know, as, 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 a, as a member of college team, I would like students to think deeply about problem without rushing to solutions. Just articulating problem is such a big step and thinking deeply about it. And college would like to do that. Absolutely amazing. I mean, that is a thought process that I believe. I mean, one of the things, I mean, all the things that you said, you know, uh, the dominant realities of careers, you know, experimenting with things, finding out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. I mean, one of the things that st has stuck with me ever since, I mean, I recently started working with college as a consultant, but one of, in my initial conversations when I was having with Sayyad, I mean, we had a long conversation about why, what is the need for doing impact projects. And one of the things he told me, and is still with me, I think it was a couple of months back, is that he said, why does everybody need to go to a university? I mean, why, why does somebody have to take a large amount of student debt, go to US, do a particular course, spend four years of his life doing something, and at the end of those four years, maybe he was never meant for a university. Maybe he could have done better uh, not being in a university, maybe taking a skill-based program or doing something else. So, I mean, that really stuck with me. And I, when I see at India, and we'll come to this, uh, and I, I and I'm having worked in the higher education, career counseling, admissions, outreach space, I see a lot of our students rushing to the West or to universities just because of their brand names or tags or, you know, the country, and I want to be there. And I have seen almost a helplessness in our educators where they feel even... We, I mean, I have had these personal experiences where I have gone to meet principals and career counselors and they have said, Ankur, help us talk to our children because we, when we talk sense to them, they, we seem to be talking to walls. I mean, there is no response. They are, they are shut themselves down and they, I want to go to XYZ country and I want to go there. Even if we want to tell them, maybe that's not the best course, better not the program, uh, we get a lot of resistance. And I think this problem itself is such a huge problem. And uh, Sayyid, I mean, uh, especially when we spoke, you also spoke about the context in US and how impact projects are, uh, are, are really picking up. I think with the panel today, what we have seen is, I mean, all the progressive uh, and leading career counselors in the country identify this problem and are already working to solve this, uh, which is a big thing. So I would like to open this up a little bit and I like to go back to my panel of high school counselors. Uh, and we go back in the same order and we started with Nitina. Uh, Nitina, if you can just talk about how are you seeing this uh, evolution of, you know, requirement of these experiential learning impact projects in your student body. I mean, are they asking for it or is it you that is, uh, you know, trying to bring this awareness among your student or parent body that they should be doing something like this? Uh, thanks, Ankur, for that question and some great thoughts shared by everyone on the panel. Um, so what's an observation with me? And uh, I'm sure, um, you know, uh, Sonia and Upasana and Monica Ma'am and Sayyid will also add to it is earlier what was seen, you know, with the questions of grade 11 and 12 students are now questions of the middle school students. So everything is yeah. now kind of backwards. Um, you know, that eagerness, that... Uh, and also channelizing mind energy and mapping it has become very, very critical. So I think uh, one, of course, I think a parent community is evolving. There's generally a lot of awareness, thanks to many things around us that gets to that. Uh, that has its own pros and cons. So one wouldn't say that, of course, is 100% and everybody's made out to do an impact project. I somewhere don't even agree to that. Uh, but the matter of the fact is that Today's generation, and I say this multiple times, is, is what they choose to study might not be relatively close to what they might get into working later as or at. 
right? So primarily, if you integrate everything backwards from saying that I want to get to a particular university and, and you know, extracurricular activities are so highly overrated in our country, uh, ki let's tick the checkbox to do a community service, let's do sports, let's do impact project, let's do, you know, internship, let's do online courses and multiple other things. I would rather say that pick up one or two things that you feel deeply about and you're truly passionate about where you, uh, you know, which, which emerge out of your own discovery of self, you know, while you're getting these different opportunities to explore yourself and experience the different environment and then dive deeper truly into making that, uh, making that uh, you know, as an impact project or however way and how do you really impact your community? That could even be your home, your, your, your school, your, your place where you stay. So I think two factors that are very, very important to me, me here is a sensitization, okay, uh, of parents in the right way. Yeah, you have to make parents aware about with reasoning that though there are many things that are around, but what is truly going to be impactful for the student? And what I was also trying to say is that whenever we're looking at that, what is our objective, right? And what are our methods to get to that? And I think if we clear, have clarity around that as a college counselor, so we, the minute the student steps into high school, uh, you know, from grade nine, uh, on our campus, we do something that's amazingly beautiful is a, is a capstone project in grade 10. And we primarily keep that as a, as a year of doing it is because uh, we say this is your board year because you're a school which does multiple curriculums. And um, this is also an year where you're going to be you know, consumed with your board examinations. But this is also an year where you also have to channelize your energy to say that let's look at creating an, an impact through a capstone project. And that capstone project is primarily looking at technology as a tool. Uh, and to identify a social problem or a problem around you and use technology to solve that problem. So you're trying to actually ideally say that, let's look at what generally you identify as a problem around you and see how can technology be used to be, uh, you know, as an enabler to solve it. When they step into grade 11, we look at internships. Um, where we say, okay, now you've step stepped into 11th, you've made a choice of curriculum, you've made a choice of subjects. Now let's dive deeper into saying that do you think the kind of skills, if you're thinking you want to become a lawyer, do you think that with, with law, you need a certain kind of skill set? Do you think, are you truly ready for it? Okay, but of course, you know, summer break, winter breaks is very less of a time, but the fact is that how real can you get children to the experiences of what they visualize or they dream or they fantasize to become, to say either do it through an impact project or do it through an experience of an internship mm -hmm. or do it through something which makes it more relatable so that accountability and responsibility compass of their own choices starts to shift on them rather than someone else making those choices for them. Over to you. Absolutely, Nicole. absolutely. And, and uh, you know, Nitina, just a follow-up question. In, I mean, uh, what are the... I mean, is there any, uh, you know, what are the uh, strategies you apply to bring these experiential learning experiences to your students? I mean, is there any, I mean, do you create this in-house or you have some partners? How do you do that? That will be also interesting for our audience to understand. Yeah, so right now, of course, uh, we've been doing multiple things in-house. Uh, we thrive a lot on a parent community. And uh, we are also, as a college counselor, I'm also a very strong believer of a fact that, you know, uh, the school the student's journey is never a student's journey alone. It takes a village to raise a child. Uh, so yeah. until a parent is an involved stakeholder, along with the school and the student himself or herself, and you also have to understand, you have to create safe places for students. So you have to, you know, the parent also needs to understand the vision of why you are doing a particular thing. Um, mm -hmm. So parents are a big partner with us on that for all our capstones and our internships. And of course, we've tied up and we also work with external partners as well a little bit to get that, um, you know, that, that, that tool or uh, technology yeah. and an enabler for our students. So we do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, what you are doing. Uh, may I invite Upasna? Upasna, I mean, I love to hear what you are doing in this area in your school. Um, again, as uh, Nitana said, I think I'll take a cue from there and uh, take it forward. So she talked uh, <clears throat> towards the end, she talked about student agency. And I guess that's the 
uh, that's a strength uh, when I look at uh, my school uh, culture. So student agency is something that we really believe strongly in. So um, if you look at the impact projects, you know, even running a club, the, it is done entirely by the students. And uh, every second year we have a student with a new idea for a club. And uh, you can understand, uh, you know, starting a club, running it, and uh, then, you know, uh, making everybody follow it and then later on join. And not just that, it goes on for years. So that is something that uh, is, uh, you know, it's like, it's like in the school's DNA. So, you know, uh, running of clubs is done by them. And in fact, a very recent, uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, something very recent I'll be talking about is a student who was uh, very passionate about gender equality. So she has been, uh, you know, uh, taking a project where she has taught, uh, you know, women from economically weaker section. She has also gone beyond that and joined uh, a school where you know she was teaching girls again from uh, economically weaker section then beyond that she also start she's also started uh, working on a project where uh, she okay. is uh, uh, it's actually a research project she's working on uh, with a mentorship uh, with a college professor and uh, it is something to do with again uh, you know uh, crime against women or violence against women and cross-cultural analysis, something to do with this. And uh, she's the one who, you know, went to the, uh, the authorities uh, that she wanted to start a club where she can, uh, you know, talk about gender equality. So then because of this interest of hers, she went on to, uh, you know, uh, to, to LinkedIn and there she found uh, the, the Girl Up Club and then she got in touch with the country director of the Girl Up Club and then she invited her to the school, made her meet the principal and put her ca case across so that, uh, you know, it happens. So finally it happened and she just started the club in school. So that's something uh, really um, interesting and she was able to do because, you know, our school gives them that kind of space to think and to come forward and take take lead. So I guess that is really important what uh, Nitana said. And uh, if you look at uh, you know projects, uh, I I guess it's really important that uh, the entire school is there for them. So if you even we look at uh, you know a lot of students doing research projects, there are few teachers who themselves have uh, PhD degrees in our school. So they are also the ones who uh, guide them and mentor them to write research papers. Apart from them, um, I guess a lot of students, um, they connect with the, uh, you know, with the people probably through their parents' connections or they find out about them and then they go, go on to do certain projects outside school as well. But uh, yeah, a lot of it is done within the school where uh, kids are, uh, you know, working on a lot of things. Yeah. So, I mean, thank you so much, Pasna, for sharing that. I mean, one of the things that I really want, I'm conscious of the time, we have about 15 minutes left, and we have a lot of uh, high school counselors who are uh, who are exploring with experiential learning programs, and they're thinking of doing impact projects. I mean, you four are one of some of the leading career counselors, but I'm also conscious of the fact that somebody uh, in the community may be thinking of, you know, experimenting with doing impact projects. How, so how do and where to begin? I mean, that's an important question that I think we should be addressing. So uh, if I can invite Sonia, Sonia, if you can just guide a baby, a budding career counselor on, you know, where should they start thinking of, you know, what are the kind of students, which age group, uh, what kind of projects, what are, if they do not have a, a legacy of doing such projects, how do they start? I mean, that's the ABC of building an impact project. So Sonia, over to you. So I think uh, one of the one of the changing trends I've seen is that parents uh, now like doing projects right from grade eight onwards. Uh, I think yeah. that's that's the that's the real scenario in India. If, if it has, Sonia, your uh, network is a bit. Uh, I mean, we can't it's hear you. Fast. It's supposed to be good. Where is it? Uh, the voice can you is. Sonia, you can turn yeah, off think... your video. Yeah, turn off your video. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. So, uh, what I'm saying is that uh, 
in case you know if you look at the real scenario and the changing times you'll find a lot of indian parents wanting to push their kids into a project right from the beginning of grade 8 because they often think that you know four years is very important four years is very important but in my opinion the summers of grade 10 after they have done their grade 10 is the actual time when as school counselors we should be helping these kids to explore what they like to do and give them a flavor of everything because sometimes we're dealing in schools like us we're dealing with either professionals or business families which would only have the flavor of these two things not more so having like what we do back in our school is having a parent conclave where we get in professionals from different arenas and ask them to share the platform with the students talking about the kind of skills they need what they want to be doing in the future to be ready like a professional like them so having that kind of an exposure is very very important and it's also equally important for schools to be understanding that you may need a support from your parent community like what nitina said uh, that's that's absolutely true having parents by your side is very very important but along with that also partnering with companies like college has been a part of some of the projects we've done at aditya birla before the pandemic so uh, some of our students went on and we gave them open space to collaborate with students from the other cities right ankur so i would say that uh, in short to the question that you have what's the right time if you begin early it doesn't mean you do very well in life it's it's all about being ready to explore and um, your internships have to be a little different from your impact projects i always say that impact means something which is driven out of your passion whereas your internship could be a testing phase for you to try and see whether in the long run do you want to be a part of this career or not i have a student who did an internship in the area of business came back and said this is not my cup of tea i want to be an artist because i worked at an art gallery and i realized that i'm more interested in painting rather than selling of those paintings so internships are important but impact projects are very different because they have to be driven out of the passion and that in itself is a profile building the big mistake that we as uh, parents and counselors make is that we very often think that if you do things only for the reason of building up a profile it's it's done whereas according to me if you pick up a project and you do go deep down your profile is automatically being made so that's it uncle samaya absolutely answer. absolutely i mean i mean those are words of gold on the topic that we are discussing if you have to just by that uh, uh, and i love uh, what uh, jitin has mentioned in the chat if somebody has not taken note of it i mean uh, he jitin is uh, one of the leading career counselors in the country he says uh, he can help uh, counselors to connect with girl up uh, which is a initiative of un foundation and they help uh, they have already helped couple of institutions to start girl up in their schools and he is happy to connect uh, anybody uh, who is thinking of doing impact projects with that uh, uh, initiative so please go ahead uh, and reach out to him uh, jitin is there in the chat box you can reach out to him there uh, thank you jitin for that uh, so i will just take couple of questions from the chat uh, also i have one question that has come up from mohita uh she has asked what is the structure of an impact project it's a project so that so what is the structure heading that we can help our students like a guiding path to start and complete the projects i mean i mean what will be the structure of a good impact project how do we define that uh sayed if we can go back to you and probably you can answer this how do you define a structure of a project what should be the goals of a project if somebody has to run that Yeah, so I can speak of how we design our impact projects. Yeah, they're very yeah. skill focused and they're very outcome focused. And one of the intentions of the impact project is to again going back to what I said is to give student a dominant reality of some profession that project is focusing on. So at the end of the project, students should have some sense of what it's like to be this person in that professional role. If student doesn't get that sense, the impact project fails, and that is not possible unless they do something that mirrors. what that profession professional does in his or her day to day life so uh, very important are what are some of the skills that student is going to learn so impact project has to have very specific skills it can't have everything otherwise you lose 
the idea of impact. Impact cannot be on everything. It, impact is a very narrow idea. So focus on something specific. What skills are you going to learn? And, and also, what are some of the realities of that profession that, that this project is mirroring? So that mirroring part has to be in the impact project, and all of these are in our project. But, you know, other colleagues can speak about how they have done their projects. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Monica, ma'am, uh, if you are around, we would love to bring your thought also on this question. Yes. So, you know, uh, I would never look at projects or anything children do with respect to admissions because I feel that it's such an essential uh, experience which children will miss out if they link it to, you know, just admissions. So I'm embedded in a system, actually, which uh, deals with uh, hands-on learning and teaching by doing right from a child uh, who enters the nursery classes. So that itself, you know, cultivates that uh, uh, entire process of understanding by doing. And as children grow up in that environment, by the time they reach the middle school years or the high school years, they are really ready to take this up to a different level. However, there may be certain, you know, children who are still a little inhibited. So there are many ways in which we offer them different kind of uh, platforms, which may be sometimes non-judgmental, uh, non-threatening, so that someone who's not comfortable can still take part in a very phenomenal way in doing something they will be comfortable with. So I think this is something no child should be left out from. And uh, a school should have, Every school should have that system and with the NEP coming and talking a lot about uh, this kind of learning wherein you learn by doing and uh, you have certain other ways by which you're teaching children or getting them to experience certain things either through internships or through field trips or through whatever experiences that they can gain. That is go That should be embedded in the curriculum, right? Rather than talking about it as something very uh, uh, separately from basically what we have. So uh, that is one uh, aspect of it. And then when children want to take it off in certain ways, then they take up projects and uh, basically you give them the plethora of things that they can choose from. So whatever, uh, you know, uh, uh, is offered to them, whether it be from school or from certain agencies or from somewhere outside where they can participate in, they can decide what they resonate with and they can dive deep into it and take it forward. So that's the way I look at it. And, uh, and I think that really works very well for every child. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. I'm also conscious of the time. So quickly taking questions from the chat box. Uh, there is a counselor from Dubai, Parul Verma. He has uh, mentioned I'm a career counselor in UAE. Uh, how is it possible to get connected with colleges and other projects to enlighten students? Uh, I mean, I think she is uh, thinking of starting impact projects in her school and then she wants some advice. Sayed, if you can take this up, how can you, you can, how can we help her? And then... Uh, Parul, I'm happy to make introductions. I mean, this we work with universities a lot and colleges. And we have several partners. Uh, we can talk and you can give me some ideas about what as a counselor you are thinking about, what kind of competencies you're interested in, what are your in student interested in. Based on that, happy to make instructions. Yeah. Uh, Bipin has asked, what are the some of the impactful projects that students interested in aeronautical space engineering can undertake? I mean, is there anyone who has some experience with the impact projects in aeronautical engineering? Um, I have already answered him, Ankur, that he could work with okay. any of the renewable energy resources. And okay. uh, also, I know that one of my students this year in Mumbai has done something with Pavan Hans. Mm. Uh, so okay. those are the kind of people who could help him. Okay, perfect. Perfect. And I see uh, Richa Shrivastava has mentioned about Makers Asylum. Uh, so, Richard, thank you for mentioning that. They're, they are also doing some great work in this area. Uh, request audience uh, to have a look at them also. I can also see if there are any other questions. I can let me also. Okay. I think that's about it uh, from the Q&A. If audience, anybody wants to ask a live question, you can go ahead. Uh, 
uh, and uh, raise your hand. Otherwise, Sayyid, I mean, we have last two minutes remaining on this webinar. Uh, I think one question that has come up is, is from Hina. Uh, Hina Virani has asked, can anyone help me with outline structure around passion projects and what grades we should look at? I mean, evaluation of uh, impact projects, how, how to... And Hina is a, a career counselor in Mumbai, or one of the well-known career counselors in Mumbai. I think she recently shifted to Global Indian International School. Uh, so anybody wants to help her uh, on the panel, or Sayyad, or anybody on the panel wants to help her, please go ahead. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I don't know. I just feel we do not grade passion projects, at least back in yeah. my school, uh, because they are so... They are they are born out of passion, so I'm not sure there is a measurable and a quantifiable aspect to that, uh, Hina. But uh, and there is, I often say that there is no structure for at least a passion project for me. What's more important for me is uh, to have the why and the roadmap done with and and a backward uh, path of it. So uh, mm -hmm. maybe for a college, because that's an organization, they would have a structure. But for me, when students do it independently. Uh, I I don't think I, I even have the right to grade somebody's passion uh, or measure it, but definitely help the child to have a backward planning to it with the mm -hmm. end product. Yeah. Thank you. So, Hina, go ahead. You are here. I mean, Hina is here. So. Yeah, I thought I'll ask it on live. So, my uh, when I asked uh, this question, uh, what I meant is uh, at which grade should we give this project? That is one thing. And when we call it as, as a passion project, do we give any structure or do we give any any guidelines or anything to a, a, a student? So when I say like, when we when we look at the social impact, you know, what problem are you trying to solve? Why, what and how of it, you know? So are we doing that in the passion yeah. project as well? So that was the question. Can I answer so, yeah, this? To you. Oh, sorry. So Basra, I'll come to you with Sayed wanted to say something and I will come to you. Sayed, over to you. No, I just quickly wanted to say I agree with Sonia that uh, projects, uh, we also don't grade projects and they should not be graded. Also, just to clarify, when you say passion project, you know, these are the projects that students think they are passionate about. They call it passion project as if they it really is their passion. The reality is they don't know whether it's their passion or not. They think that it is their passion. And that's why mm. we our projects are very focused on validation. We make it very clear that you're validating it. You know, at that age, you don't know. You don't know. You think it is. But then once you do it and you get to know the realities of it, then you will know whether it's truly your passion or not. And if it is, then move forward. And it may not be, it is my passion or it is not my passion. In most cases, it is somewhere in the middle. You get some little, you know, hints and some signs emerge and you say, oh, this is something I like. This is something yeah, I like to pursue more. You know, it gives you some hints. Um, in terms of the structure, we have some structure and the way we sort of... Uh, uh, you know, we don't grade, as Sonia said, we also don't grade, but what we do is we reflect. Uh, reflection is a big part of it. So once you finish the project and while you are doing the project every week, uh, you reflect on it and say, this is the, this was the skill that you were meant to develop. Have you developed it? This was the outcome that you were going to achieve. You're halfway through. Are you likely to achieve this? Is it going to happen with the same strength and frequency that you had achieved it? And if not, why? Where are you where did things go wrong? What was the, where were the areas where you could have added more rigor? What went wrong or what went well and why did it go well? We don't care about whether things go well or not well. What we really focus on, why has it gone well? What have you done that worked? Or fine, you couldn't do it. You wanted to do this, but it didn't happen as, you know, with the same rigor as why has it not happened? So reflection is the biggest part of it as, you know, the, the, the closest equivalent of grade that we have in our project is reflection, weekly reflection on the project and making sure that students get to understand uh, what they have been working on and why it has worked or not worked. So they're able to get some insights. Thank you so much, Amazing. Sayed, I think. Perfect. Amazing. And I agree with what uh, I mean, Sayed and Sonia said. I mean, we definitely, uh, we do not need another exam to grade them. I mean, this just becomes like another exam to be given. So, Pasna, you wanted to say something? 
uh, I sorry. Uh, I had yeah, I just it. wanted to share something with the college counselors. So this is one activity that uh, I do with my eighth graders, which you know I would love to share with you. So it's probably kind of you know priming them towards thinking about world problems or thinking about problems around them and how they can solve. So you know what what I do is I uh, make them create three different types of uh, slips. So you know one set of slips is about product, one uh, set of slips is about brands, and the third type of slip is about the problems that they see around. So it can be um, you know water shortage, it can be gender inequality, it can be terrorism, anything. It's up to them. So they you know they sit in groups and they write down the third set of slips, and then we jumble up the slips. And, uh, you know, but then I keep them as separate one, two, three, uh, you know, mounds on my table. And then I ask them to come and pick one slip from uh, each uh, heap. So, you know, each, uh, each group gets slip one, two, and three. So it can be as varied as a Honda and a helmet and terrorism. You know, now you have to look at this problem. This is the, <laughs> this is the product Honda is making <clears throat> or maybe Mercedes. And now, how do you think you are going to deal with this problem using this product? And now you have to create, you have to give me a pitch uh, related to this. So it turns up hilariously well, so, but the kind of creativity that comes out, you know, the, the AI tools they want to use and God knows, God knows what all they use. But, you know, it's, it's a very good starting point because then you can start talking about how you can create impacts and so on and so forth, because, you know, that's what we're looking at. So maybe you can also try this in school sometime. Upasna, I'm going to Amen. reach out to you. Yeah, please do. And this is a very interesting idea. <laughs> Great. I mean, I love the conversation we had today. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, opening up, sharing. I mean, uh, all four of you. I mean, uh, Upasna, Sonia, Nitina, Monica, and of course, Sayyad. I mean, all of you are doing some fantastic work in this area. I think. We had a very, very engaged audience. Uh, I mean, we had so many questions. We had uh, so many ideas being uh, shared around. Thank you so much to everyone that came and joined in this conversation. This is the first of, uh, you know, uh, uh, multiple webinars that Collegi uh, will be organizing in coming few weeks. We look forward to having you back again. And we look forward to driving this conversation around impact projects and, and the wonderful work that goes around in building them and how we can you know, uh, help other schools, other career counselors develop those capabilities uh, so that your students also have access to the best of impact projects that are available to them. Thank you so much uh, uh, once again for spending one hour with us this evening. Uh, and uh, uh, we look forward to having you back. Any last words from my panel? Uh, most welcome. Otherwise, it's a goodbye from my side. Thank you so much, uh, Ankur and Sayed, for just co-hosting this. and. I think I would say that impact projects are important, but more important is that giving the window to the passions because I think some of us are counselors because we are very passionate about it <laughs> rather than being, uh, rather than doing what we have graduated with our degrees. In. And I'm sure Nitina would agree so much to it because we, two of us have had long conversations about our passions in life. Thank you so much. Um, I would also like to say thanks to the entire panel. Today. Sorry. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for, uh, you know, creating this uh, space for all of us today. And towards the end, what I would like to say for anybody and everybody listening and dealing with students. So the, the one, um, you know, the one advice or probably the one message that I generally give to my kids is, I'm sure you also do the same. It's not about achieving the results, but it is about the journey. So whatever they learn throughout the journey of, you know, designing a project, why it was that they thought about it and what all did they learn throughout. So, you know, building the re resilience when they were failing in certain ways and then again, building it up. So I guess that is more important and uh, they should be happy about whatever they did throughout the journey. Um, outcomes will come <laughs> sometime. <laughs> Thank you. I, I couldn't agree more, Upasana and Sonia. Uh, I hope that you know all of the work that we are doing in our little capacities are small work, and they all collectively become big. Our my hope, and I, I hope you all agree, is that you know when we zoom out, I hope that we build young people who vote. 
who go out and pay their taxes, who if they're standing in the line and somebody breaks the line, they go and say, hey, no, that's wrong. They resist. I mean, ultimately, this is this is what drives us. Uh, but all of these things that we're talking in our small little capacity and, you know, apology is just one of the very many and we would love to partner uh, with others. But really, the impact word here on the screen that I keep looking at, and I think Ankur and I are talking about doing a little impact boot camp and impact conference where we would like to go deeper on what really is the impact, you know? Uh, do Are we making any impact if we have communal mm -hmm. rights in our society? Are we really making any impact if our streets are dirty? Are we making any impact if our judges are corrupt? Uh, are we making any impact if we have uh, chief ministers and uh, cabinet ministers who have uh, uh, criminal charges against them? I think that partly is our failure. I think we, all of us, I think have the privilege as counselors to build citizens I don't think a doctor can say that. I really don't think engineers can say that. I don't think entrepreneur can say that. I think teachers and counselors can say that. We build citizens. Uh, it's because of our work that, that tomorrow when they grow up, they go and vote and they encourage other people to vote. They become the reason why their uh, ecosystem believes in democracies and due diligence and, and gentleness and honesty. So I think that that really is wonderful. And just listening to some of you uh, giving such very specific example gives me a lot of hope. I'm really keen to partner with you, work with you and do whatever I can to, to, to help you do what you're doing and seek some help to do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm.